Shalom, shalom, mishpocha. Um, as you can see, uh, the introduction was just the beginning, and I'm still in my same clothes, so obviously I'm doing this one right after uh, the other video. Um, I think that one went okay. So what I would like to do is just uh, start by um, uh, doing a Torah portion, uh, and it's going to be called uh, Torah Tidbits. And this week our Torah portion is from the book of Exodus, uh, the book of Shemot, and uh, it's just the uh, first, basically the first six, six chapters of uh, Exodus, uh, talking mostly about the uh, the life of Moses. And I want to read something to you in Exodus chapter two, Shemot chapter two, verse eleven. It says, "And it came to pass that in those days, when Moshe was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren." And he looked this way and that, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to them uh, that did the, the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou brother? And he said, huh, Who made you prince and judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killed the Egyptian? And Moshe feared, and he said, Well, <laughs> surely this thing must be known. Now when Paro heard these things, he sought to slay Moshe. But Moshe sled from the face of Paro and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Uh, so this is a very well-known passage, and I think it's very interesting that the leader of um, of the Hebrews, um, the one who we consider uh, basically one of the founding fathers of our faith, but besides Avraham Avinu, he's the one who who God gave the Torah, and the Torah uh, he gave gave to Bnei Israel, the children of Israel. And yet God used a murderer. You know, he didn't pick somebody that was perfect. He didn't pick somebody that was squeaky clean. Um, he used uh, he used somebody with stammering lips. He used somebody with a speech impediment. He used uh, somebody, uh, you know, that a murderer. Uh, so how many people do we have in prisons today that are just so full of potential and they just kind of got misguided and went the wrong way? Now Moshe's heart as a young person was in the right place. Um, as we know that uh, Pharaoh's daughter found him and drew him out of the water, adopted uh, Moshe as her own, but yet Miriam, his sister, was the one who um, uh, you know, stayed by the basket to make sure Moshe was safe. And she says, uh, Princess, can I go and get uh, one of the Hebrew women to, to nurse the child? Who, who does she get? Moshe's own mother, you know, her, her own mother. Uh, so he's raised by his mother. He's taught Torah. He's, as they knew it at that time, he's taught Judaism as it's known at that time, and so he 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 knows who he is and where he came from. But yet he was raised as a prince of Egypt. So when he goes out and and really sees his his uh, kinsmen and how they're in slavery, his heart just aches and burns. And and you know he's like, well, you know, I'm a prince of Egypt. I, I must be able to do something about this. And then he saw one of the Egyptians abusing a Hebrew slave so he kills him and buries him in the sand um, and you know I don't know if it was kind of like the road rage thing or whatever or, or if he actually was trying to start a revolution uh, but anyway he made the big mistake of killing the Egyptian and uh, obviously somebody's seen it because two day. Hebrews are fighting. and uh, they, they uh, um, you know Moshe tried to stop him and he says well who made you a prince over us you know you're sitting in ivory towers and here we're slaving our way who do you think you are uh, so Moshe had to flee, but it's interesting, he tried to start a revolution on his own and tried to, to be the deliverer, the savior, the free, uh, uh, um, you know, the, the uh, revolutionary of his people, to free his people from slavery in Egypt, and yet he ended up on the lamb, being a fugitive from uh, Pharaoh, and found himself in Midian, when all along God wanted him to be uh, the leader, to be the redeemer of Israel, to, to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt through the Exodus. But Moshe jumped the gun. It wasn't the right time. And how many times in our lives do we burn to do something for God within our hearts and we, and we strive and we try to do it? And uh, we seem to, to jump the gun just like uh, Kepha, Peter. Um, you know, he was always wanting, he's saying, Lord, I'll never forsake you. And he goes, oh yeah, well, you'll be one of the first ones. And, um, you know, they try to take Yeshua away. What does he do? Take out a sword and, and smite the ear off of the servant, Malchus. Um, he, he was always jumping the gun. He had the right heart, but uh, he always jumped the gun, and he wasn't waiting for God's timing. And this is the same thing that happened to Moshe. He didn't wait for God's timing. 
So he had this uh, time of his own in, in the wilderness, being a shepherd of Midian, and uh, where he was humbled, and, and, and uh, Yahweh taught him and uh, molded him into the leader. And yet, isn't it ironic that when it's time, when God says, it's time, it's time for you to go and free your people, and he speaks through Moshe, through the burning bush, he's like, um, I think you've got the wrong fella. He was so zealous at first, and he caused his own exile from Egypt and from his people. But yet, when God knew the time was right, when he was ready, he was so lowly and so humble, he says, you know, who am I? I can't do it. And uh, he refuses so much that God actually gets angry with him. Uh, so, uh, you know, as we see and as we read, and it's obvious that Moshe, Baruch Hashem, uh, finally obeyed God. And, uh, you know, he was the deliverer of, of you know, his people. And we celebrate it every year um, through through uh, Pesach, through Passover. We read about it and we pray about it every day from the Siddur. Um, but anyway, what I want you to take away uh, this Torah portion uh, this year is, uh, you know, when you have those things burning in your heart, um, think of it as a campfire. Fire is a great thing. It's a good thing. But, you know, if it gets out of hand, it can cause a forest fire. It can burn things down. It can destroy things. But yet if you harness it and use it right, it can be a light. It can, it can cook food, it can warm. There's a lot of things fire can do that's, that's constructive instead of destructive. So next time you have a burning in your heart to do something, say, God, just put campfire stones, so to speak. The, 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 the Torah, put the Torah around my heart because, you know, just like the, uh, <clears throat> the stone tablets of the Ten, the Ten Commandments, uh, use those as uh, uh, campfire stones to hone that fire safely in so it can be controlled, so it can be molded, so it can um, be uh, of use and, and be constructive instead of destructive. And so when God puts something in your heart to do, you're going to have this burning desire to do it, but ask God to train you up, to make you ready, to prepare you so that when the time is right, you won't stick your foot in your mouth like Kepha often did, that you won't jump the gun and, 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 and uh, make a mistake like killing an Egyptian, but that it'll be the right time, and God will be able to use you mightily in his work, mightily in his kingdom, mighty in ministry, to bring people um, uh, back to the Torah, back to Yeshua HaMashiach, back to the Messiah, and out of the paganism that's rife within our modern-day Christian churches today. So um, enjoy this Torah portion, and uh, I hope you have a great Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.